Well, hi friends. It is so great to be together again today. Last week, we learned about a girl named Miriam who was able to save her brother Moses, who ended up changing the course of history for the Israelites when he was able to free them from captivity. Well, skip ahead quite a few years with me and it comes time for Moses to give over the leadership responsibilities to somebody else. A man named Joshua, who had been working closely with Moses, serving the Israelites in many different ways, truly rose up and went from servant to leader. The interesting thing about our hero is that the Bible talks about how, jo how Joshua was invincible. How cool of a superpower would that be? In Joshua 1, 5, God promises him that not one person will be able to stand against him and that God will be with Joshua all the days of his life. As time passes by and the 40 years in the desert is coming to an end, it is time for Joshua to lead the Israelites into the promised land. The problem is there's a giant wall guarding the area of their promised land that was promised to them by God and is now being used by somebody else. It wasn't good. This made the people upset. And they knew they must prepare for battle if they were going to win their land back. As he prepared his people for battle, Joshua sought the Lord and his will. Then the Lord spoke to Joshua. He reminded him that he had promised him that land. And so he said, march around the city one time. In fact, do it for seven days. Have priests get trumpets. They must carry them in front of the ark but do not use them yet. On the seventh day, march around the city, not one time, but seven times. Have the priest blow the trumpets as you march. You will hear them blow a long blast on the trumpets at the end. And when you do, have all of the men give a loud shout and the walls of the city will fall down. Hmm, I don't know about you, but I've never heard of a battle being fought like that before. The people of Israel were probably thinking that Joshua was losing it. He must be confused or not hearing God correctly. Joshua assured them that this was God's plan for their victory and that because of it, they would carry out his plan just as he had told it to him. The next day they got up and prepared themselves for this new battle plan. They got the ark ready and they got their horns and they marched around the wall just as God had instructed them to do. I can only imagine how much the people living inside the wall laughed at the Israelites. I imagine they made fun of them or maybe even stood there throwing things over the wall at them. But this did not stop the Israelites. They continued on for six days. On the seventh day, they got up at sunrise. They marched around the city just as they had done before. But this time they went around the wall seven times. On the seventh time, the priest blew a long blast on the trumpets. Then Joshua gave a command to the men. He said, shout, the Lord has given you the city. The priest blew the trumpets. As soon as the fighting men heard the sound, they gave a loud shout. Then the wall fell down. I imagine both sides of this battle were shocked as the walls crumbled at little more than the blowing of horns and the shouting of men. I imagine they stood there shocked by the piles of rubble gathered around them. You see, when God writes our story and prepares battle plans for us, he uses his ways and not our own. God sees differently than we see and because of it, he can make things work out in ways we can't even imagine. Joshua heard God's voice because he knew it and was listening for it. If we want to hear God's voice, we need to know how to hear it. God speaks to us through the Bible. He has written us so many great promises and plans, and it's all right there in one book. 
as we read it, we will begin to know the way God wants us to live and love and lead. God also speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. As we pray and ask God for wisdom, we can begin to hear this still small voice inside of us telling what it is God has for us and how he wants us to accomplish it. Now is the time for you to be strengthening your relationship with God. Read your Bible or have a grown up read it to you. Pray every day and not just a poem like prayer at dinner, but talk to God like you would anybody that you love and care for. Prayer doesn't have to be fancy. God just wants to hear from you. And as you grow in a relationship with him, you will begin to hear from him. Often people ask how they know when God is speaking to them. And I can assure you, you will just know. There's one more hero left in our series, and it is by far my favorite of all heroes. So make sure you come back next week. As you continue on in your journey seeking God, you may have questions. Feel free to talk to the grown-up that brings you to church or reach out to me or to one of the other teachers from VP Kids and your parents or the grown-ups you come to church with can help you with that. Well, it has been another great week and I cannot wait to see you again soon. Bye!